Mark Barnes here, and I want to talk about hacking old school today. So what we would like to do is reimagine your classroom. And in true hack learning style, I want to do that today by talking about five ways that you can reimagine your class and create this vibrant, uh, chaotic, energetic, student-centered learning environment that kids are going to love. And this is a marvelous way to create uh, self-evaluative, independent learners. So again, I want to talk about five simple strategies, and uh, I'm going to name each one, and then I want to talk a little bit about how it works. So number one, uh, we're going to stick with the word reimagine. We are going to reimagine your classroom's design. You can't really have a, a vibrant, chaotic, student-centered classroom if you've got the old traditional desks in rows. Now, I know so many teachers have already moved away from this, and it's tremendous. I, I have been in rooms in the field where I walk in and there are beanbag chairs and and couches and you know round tables and just really amazing comfortable environments and uh, and I love this and you see kids doing different things and some are gathered together and some are sitting in a chair on their own maybe reading a book but but and maybe there's plants there's flowers there's something that makes the room seem alive more so than just kids and a teacher and uh, we need to think about this so imagine your own classroom maybe as you're listening now close your eyes not if you're driving uh, and think what does my room look like and and what about it is inviting and engaging to kids and then again in classic hack learning style think what can I what can I do tomorrow or today to improve this? And you may not transform your room in one day, but what could you do? What's one thing? If you have old school desks and they're in rows, can you uh, pull them out of rows? Can you put them in pods, maybe in twos, threes, or fours? And you know you can get your kids to help you with this, and they'll love that. So think about that. Uh, can you open some windows, raise your shades, uh, bring in a, a, a poster, or better yet, have kids create something that they can hang on the walls? We want the room inviting. We want it to be comfortable. We want it to, uh, to, to look like a place where collaboration exists. So this is the first step to reimagining our class, and that's start with design. So step two, and we're creating a student-centered classroom, uh, and now we're going to move to strategy. So step two, we want to replace lecture-style instruction with discovery. Okay, so think about what you do as a teacher to share information. Now, in the old school way, uh, we lecture. We stand in front of kids, and not many people are doing that anymore because we've got technology, we've got whiteboards, we've got all kinds of different ways to deliver, but still, think about how you do this, and if you're standing and delivering for too long, well, too long is too long, and, and what is that? You know, three minutes, five minutes, eight minutes? Think of your students. You know them better than I do. You know them better than most. What can they tolerate? And I can tell you, especially from the younger ages, uh, kids don't want to listen to people talk for very long. So even if you are using interactive tools, think about how you can cut back on delivering information. What can you do to get your students to find the information? One of my favorite activities uh, is when I used to, I had an interactive whiteboard, and I used to use it to just stand and deliver. And, and then I changed, thankfully. I started to hack learning. So what I did is uh, if I wanted kids to learn new words or terms or concepts, what I would do is I would, I would put it on the board and I, I would say, here you go. Now we need to learn this. Maybe we were doing literary elements or um, figurative language and I might put up metaphor and simile and, um, and onomatopoeia, illusion, things like that and say – Let's let's go find these. And we had some computers, and the kids had mobile devices, and we had textbooks, and, and, and kids had their peers. And I would say, you can do anything 
in his room to find this information. And, and wow, it was incredible to see what they did. Okay, so we're going to reimagine design. We're going to replace lecture with discovery learning activities, collaboration, things like that. Step three, to build this incredible student-centered classroom, we're going to replace worksheets and workbooks with digital learning tools. Now, thankfully, we're in a time now where almost everyone has some sort of technology. And if you don't, or if you have one computer and you've got 25 kids, well, they do have technology. Now, I know this can be a huge shift if you go to from nothing, no mobile devices in the classroom, to suddenly bringing them in. That, that's a big shift, and there's a lot that goes into that. Uh, but that. So you might think, well, that's not a fix-it-right-now problem, but it can be with some experimentation. So invite your kids to bring their devices in and say, what can we do to discover learning? Think of something that might have been delivered in a worksheet or a workbook. Uh, typically, they, they put the information on a page and tell the kids what that information is, and they have to memorize it or it gives them step-by-step -step instructions to do some sort of activity. How could you put them on devices and use digital tools, blogs, social networks, even things like Wikipedia to do research? Uh, you could do that. And the kids have the devices, and there may be issues to work out. You might be, you know, I may be um, getting pushback right now. You might say, well, Mark, we've got this issue, we've got that issue. Think about it, work through it. What could you do in the short term that you could then build out later getting some help from colleagues and school leaders? Uh, but we have to start thinking this way. So uh, reimagine your classroom design, replace lecture with discovery, replace worksheets and workbooks with digital learning tools. Step four, to create our student center classroom, we want to replace most independent seat work with collaboration. Remember the design step. When I said if you've got traditional desks and rows, take them out, put them together, put them in pods, groups of three or four, move them around, let kids do it. Uh, we need to not only design the room so it looks like a place where collaboration happens, but we need to then have collaboration. So think of the things you would do independently, those worksheets and those workbooks. If we're pushing those aside, well, now it's time to have kids talk. Let's put them together and let's let them find the information. Let's let them ask the questions, not just to, to the teacher, but to their peers. Let's let them answer the questions. Inspire discussion. Uh, bring out whiteboards. Bring out poster board, butcher paper, uh, scissors, crayons, and let them work together, and you'll be amazed at what they come up with. So let's move to step five. Uh, replace one-off activities with ongoing projects. So you, you see how this is building. First, we start with design. We're creating a student-centered class. Second, we're trying to push the teacher to the side by eliminating lecture. And, and let's go from sage on the stage to guide on the side. We want to replace the old school tools, worksheets, workbooks, and use digital learning tools. We want to stop the independent, quiet seat work and get kids talking and moving. And then finally, it, this is the, the sort of the coup de grace. Now, instead of those one-off, one-day activities, I'm building a project, something that it doesn't have to be a day or a week or a month. It could be an entire school year where you think, what are objectives that I can inject into a major project and I can give kids choice in how they demonstrate learning? And we could work on this daily, certainly three times a week. And then when you discard the old traditional homework, and boy, I'll have more on that in another Hack Learning podcast. But when you do that, kids will go home and work on things they're invested in if you give them an amazing ongoing project, something they need to work on. Think of your own projects, thing you, things you build over time and you find time to work on and you relish that time. What if we give kids that same opportunity? Boy, the learning will just, uh, it, it'll flourish, it'll fly. So 
create your student-centered classroom today. There's some right now steps here for sure. And there are some that require help and they require capacity building, but you can do that over time. Have your stakeholders help. Invite your kids to give you feedback, what works and what doesn't. Talk to colleagues, collaborate within and across departments, seek help from school leaders, get the materials you need. All of these things can happen. You can do some tomorrow, some may take more time. Take any of these five steps for creating a vibrant, chaotic, fun, amazing student-centered classroom and start something tomorrow because that is the hack learning way. There's so much more about uh, Right Now Solutions in Education in Hack Learning Series books. Check out hacklearningbooks.com. More about hack learning at hacklearning.org. There's amazing courses about this stuff at hacklearningacademy.com. Uh, and, and tweet at us at hashtag hack learning. Stay in touch because we want to hear from you because that helps drive what we do. Thanks. See you next time.